Hello friends, so welcome back to my channel. It is another sort of gray November day and we are here to read a book as we do on this channel. But this book just arrived yesterday and I am super excited to read it because I loved the like preceding series when I was younger. Um, and so I'm super excited to jump back into that world. And that book is, of course, Murtaugh by Christopher Paolini. This is a follow-up to The Inheritance Cycle, which you can see here. And yeah, I think this is going to be following the character of Murtaugh, because we kind of, we don't really get a super... His character line kind of doesn't really like super wrap up. I believe he sort of just like goes off on his own at the end of the cycle to kind of do his own thing, you know, learn who he is now that he's kind of like freed himself from Galvatorix. Um, so yeah, now we're going to be continuing seeing what he's been up to, I guess, and what what his like, what his life is like. And I would like to release this video this Saturday. And today is Thursday, so I have two days to read this bad boy. It's about 660 pages or so, I think. Let me check. Yeah, 660 odd pages. So it is quite a few pages. However, the type is quite large and wide set. And if it's written kind of similarly to the inheritance cycle, then I think it should be a pretty quick and easy read. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the first like 10 or so pages now give you my initial impressions, and then we will get stuck into reading as much of this today as we can. Let's go. We've got a map here. Um, it looks kind of like it's supposed to have looked like it's like folded, and uh, it's in like dwarven rooms, which is interesting. I'm not really sure why that's that way. I think it's just the same map of Alagesia that we had in the inheritance cycle. All right, we're starting in I never know how you say this city. It's like Seonon. I don't know. But we've got interesting little title pages. Oh, we've got a city map. City map. Okay. All right. And then we are starting. I'm excited. <laughs> which is also conveniently the first chapter. So I'm just about to start the second chapter. Uh, yeah, so far I kind of really have no idea what <laughs> the story is gonna be. Jenna. Sorry, my cat is looking for some attention. Um, yeah, so Murtaugh is just kind of like going to this city. He's going to meet somebody. We don't know what yet. He sounds like he's just kind of been roaming the wilds. In the fading dust, the sparkle of the dragon's scales was subdued tamped down like coals in a banked fire, waiting for a breath of wind to flare back to brilliance. Like, I don't know, I just think that is quite nice. And I think I might annotate this. It also does help for like, in terms of like making videos, like if I have some things to look back on. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to find some of my tabs. Oh no, I just folded part of it. Oops. So I'm gonna have to find up some of my tabs. I think I probably need to go for reds. If I have those, I feel like most of it's kind of like blues and greens and stuff, but yeah. I'm gonna set up an annotation key and then keep reading. We still have another 650 pages to get to.
right, so we have just reached the Gilead section. So I am 80 pages into the book. And I kind of hate to say it, but at the moment, I am kind of bored. Like, we have Murtog and Thorn, and they are kind of doing some, like, mission quest thing that seems to be, like, loosely inspired by something. Uh, one of the um, dragon's uh, stone things, I forget what they're called, said to them at the when they were leaving at the end of Inheritance. Um, but it kind of doesn't really feel, like, natural. It's just, like, I don't know, like, Murtog got, like, bored or something, and he was just, like, I don't know, let's, like, stir up some nonsense. And Thorne's like, what if we didn't? And Murtaugh's like, but I have to. It's like, it's my responsibility as, like, a dragon rider or whatever. And I don't know. It feels kind of forced. It doesn't feel very good. And, yeah, not much has happened yet. They're just kind of, they're going to Gilead because they think they can learn something here. But so far, I don't know. At first, I was like, oh, yeah, the writing is, like, definitely better. But there have been some, like, scenes and mine since then where I was just like this feels really awkward kind of fumbled and yeah we shall see if it improves as I move on but so far unfortunately it's not living up to my expectations which I probably shouldn't have set them so high because it's just like nostalgia is a hell of a drug you know so but we move on I assume as we kind of get into things it might improve, you know, pace pick up, things will make more sense, but we shall have to see as we read. I've had some lunch and I'm up to page 169 and as things sort of pick up a little bit I am kind of starting to enjoy it a little more you know we have some action something to something to pay attention to um but it does kind of feel like a little bit like oh like we did this thing and then we got this quest so then we have to do this this and this thing which I like I know is how like plots work but it's just like the way it's presented it feels very like laid out like a list of like we need to do this and then this and then this and i don't know it's a bit i don't know i guess like plain almost like lacking in craft i feel like and i feel really bad for complaining about this book and or talking poorly about it i was so excited and i thought this was gonna be like a really positive fun experience but i am enjoying it now i think i think <laughs> uh, I think I am, but just not as much as I hoped that I would, so we shall see. I am now, like, what's this, like, like around a quarter-ish of the way through, I would say? So, you're making progress. I will hopefully at least be able to get to halfway through today, and yeah, I will give you an update when I've made a decent amount more progress. the next day I have read about 50 pages today I'm up to page 400 and I hate to keep being negative but like I'm bored I just want something to happen like things have happened but like somehow they don't feel like things that have happened you know it still feels like we're setting stuff up and I'm just like oh my god can we like get to it like I kind of thought this was supposed to be a standalone and not like the beginning of another series so you would think, you know, 650 pages by page 400, you know, like a good chunk of stuff would have happened. Um, but yeah, I am just unfortunately kind of bored and not really enjoying it. And so I just like want to stop reading, but I want to finish it for this video, but I don't want to read it. 
This is really unfortunate because, like I said before, I was so excited. And now, now I'm not. We need to talk about Murtaugh. Uh, so, as you will have seen sort of throughout this video, this was not my favorite. Um, in fact, it was quite a bit of a disappointment because I did love the inheritance cycle, albeit there was a certain amount of nostalgia attached to those because I read them when I was quite young for the first time. I did reread them last year and still enjoy them, but it's definitely, I think one of those things that like, you love them so much because you read them when they were younger and no matter if you reread them now, you're always gonna have those rose tinted glasses. Um, but I did not have that for this book. And so I didn't really enjoy my experience reading it, unfortunately. Um, I initially was like, okay, things are kind of slow. And then a few things started to happen. I was like, okay, maybe we're picking up. And then for like 300 pages, I was bored again. And then the last like 200 pages, uh, I think they were better. I think Pali does do a decent job writing like action sort of stuff. And he's good at capturing like the tenseness kind of thing of like, as things like build up. However, the whole like first like slow build up part was not very good. So I'm gonna try to do a small spoiler free section here and then we will talk spoilers, which I think will be kind of most of the review because a lot of things that I wanna talk about have to do with the story. So in terms of non-spoilery review, I did kind of feel, and I did mention this earlier, that while reading this book, it was very kind of like almost formulaic, like we were checking things off the list. It was like Murtaugh was trying to do this like one thing and I have no idea how he even really got into it. Like it's kind of explained, but like not really. Um, and then he has to do this thing to do it. And then somebody else tells him he's got to do this other thing. And then sort of do that thing, he has to do this thing. And it's very kind of like checking boxes off the list instead of like, he's trying to do this thing and like things happen to him. It's just like, he's just like, all right, do this thing, do this thing. He's going grocery shopping, you know? And just because the things on the grocery list are werecats and muckma, still a grocery list. So that was kind of pretty unfortunate because it made it feel really like I was just kind of reading my way through Paolini's little like check boxes and it didn't feel like dynamic because of that. It just feels very like extremely structured kind of. So that is kind of like my main, like I would say that the biggest probably concern or gripe with this book is just like the way it read was very structured and formulaic and not very like natural stories happening sort of deal. So, but moving on, um, Paolini, I think, so obviously I don't know anything about his life or what he's been through, but to me, the way he was trying to portray uh, Murtaugh and Thorn, who is the dragon, so they're supposed to have a whole bunch of trauma from Galvatorx, like torturing them and like the way he treated them. He essentially made them slaves and then forced Murtaugh to torture people um, or torture somebody who he really, really cared about, uh, which is obviously super, super traumatic. And he in this book was kind of trying to like address that and like talk a little bit about like mental health and how it affects them and their lives. But it just like, it came across kind of as somebody who hasn't experienced it writing about it. And now obviously I could be wrong. I don't know what's going on in Paolini's life, but even if he has experienced it, uh, he didn't write about it very well. And yeah, I don't know, it's just like, like Thorn has this fear of enclosed spaces. I won't really say that's a spoiler. And they kind of try to like work through that through essentially like exposure therapy. But I don't know, just like the way that he wrote about it, I wasn't like buying it. It wasn't, I don't know. It just like felt very kind of like surface level. It was kind of like a secondary like plot thing that they got to kind of you know like work on themselves while they're also doing like this like kind of big quest and the results of the big quest may or may not depend on whether or not they're able to work on themselves. 
And yeah, I just kind of felt like he had sort of fumbled that a bit. It didn't feel, it didn't feel very real. It didn't feel very deep. It felt, as I said, kind of very surface level and just like thrown in there as like an additional plot point. Like he didn't really actually explore the emotions that might come up from that and like the problems that it causes in the lives of them. Like he does like a little bit more for Thorn than for Murtog, but I don't know. I just felt like he could have done a lot more than that and that he kind of just like chickened out almost like just commit to it tell us how terrible it is because it is terrible to be traumatized and it doesn't come across that way in this book so those are my definitely two main concerns uh i don't think the writing in this was super stellar at the beginning i was like oh yeah some of these descriptions are really nice and he does have some nice descriptions um but a lot of it the scenes kind of felt the way they were constructed didn't didn't flow very nicely. A lot of the exchanges felt kind of awkward and like I wasn't buying it. And yeah, I don't know. I just like was really disappointed by that. I was kind of hoping that like, since it's been so long since Inheritance came out, that Pauline would have had a lot of time to practice his craft, get better, but it just did not feel better. It almost felt worse. So I don't know what happened here, but it could have used more editing because I also think that it could have been a lot shorter. It's 660 pages and it could have easily 100 pages shorter if not more. Um, but yeah, I think those are all kind of the main non-spoilery things. I did actually manage to cover some of the things I was thinking would be spoilery in this section, so the spoiler section might be shorter. But I'm going to go into the spoilers now. If you don't want to be spoiled, then don't watch this section. Um, yeah, I'll put up a timestamp for when you can come back in. Okay, this is not a spoiler section. So if you wanted to read this, you've been warned. I will say whatever the heck I want about it. So kind of like in the beginning, we find out that Murtaugh is kind of like trying to get answers to these questions. And then it's explained that like one of the Eldenari, which is like the dragon like memory thing when they had, Throw it. You, you have to read inheritance to understand what an ordinary is, but it tells him that like you, know, you shouldn't go to any of these places because they're like bad or whatever. Like you'll get messed up, like you'll die or whatever. And so of course the first thing he immediately does is try to like investigate these places, but it's not really clear how he's like, he's got like some rock thing. I don't really know how he got it. He's talking to this guy. I don't know how he figured out that like this is the guy that he should like talk to about this. This is kind of like vague because we kind of jump in like as he's already started his investigation and stuff and we don't really know what he's been doing all this time other than like asking this guy to like check shit out and then like paying him in like different random places. Um, so that was kind of like weird the way that it's like introduced. I'm just like I'm not really sure why he's on this quest or like why he's so invested other than like he got bored? I don't really know why it's supposed to matter to him so much. I mean, he's just like, I need to prove that like I can do something on my own, which like is fair. But then like, I don't know. It just like felt kind of random that he's like, oh, this like really powerful dragon who's definitely like a lot smarter than me and Thorne told me not to do something. I'm immediately going to go do that thing. Um, it's not an endearing character. Move. It's just kind of like, well, okay, well then anything that happens to you, you were told not to do this thing and <laughs> you're doing it anyway. So I don't really find Murtaugh a very good character. Here's the thing. I don't think Paolini is super good at characterization because Murtaugh and Aragon, I don't know, they have the same voice. Like they're like, oh, we have, they have like different, like, I don't even know. They just felt very similar reading them. And so did Thorne and Saphira. Like, they just, it's like, oh, the, like, kind of dragon who is very, like, vain and, like, it's not a stupid animal, but they do kind of just do everything their rider does. It's kind of the same dynamic there. It's not really any different. Um, so that's a big kind of disappointment. It's just, like, just kind of feels like I'm reading the same, like, character sort of situation almost. And then we also have this whole, like, kind of through line where, like, Murtaugh is obsessed with protecting children, which like is fine. Like I feel like most characters, at least ones that are good, 
don't want to hurt children and like will probably protect them given the opportunity but the way that it's like shoved in our faces like Murtaugh wants to protect kids he wants to protect kids I was like is he gonna have a secret kid pop up like this seems like it's gonna be way more important than it turns out to be in the end like it's just like I didn't really <laughs> understand it like I people understand that like hurting children is bad at least most normal people um so I don't really know why probably knew it was just like Murtaugh thinks protecting kids is good it's like Okay, I get it. Are you trying to tell me that Murtaugh is a good character or something? Because, like, he doesn't hurt children? <laughs> I don't really get the whole, like, what the point of that was. Like, did he just have a kid or something? Because it feels like he just had a kid. Um, but yeah, that one was kind of strange. And then the last thing that I kind of want to talk about is... Okay, so I definitely thought this was a standalone. And I think that you technically could say that it is. Because... There's like the main quest is like he wants to find out this one specific spot, what's going on there, and like deal with it. And he does that. It takes a really long time for him to get there and figure it out, but he does do that. Um, but in doing that thing, he finds a bunch of other shit that has to get dealt with. So now, even though this could sort of be a standalone, it's definitely opening up like another arc of this world. And I did kind of expect that because I had heard that he wants to like write like something from this world and then he's got some other sci-fi world and like alternate between those two so we know he's coming back to the world of Alagazia so this definitely kind of read like he's setting he almost like the point of this book is not even to explore the character of Murtaugh and what he's been doing since and who he is and all that stuff it seems more of a setup for things that are to come that will probably also feature Murtog and maybe some of the other expanded cast. I don't really know, but 660 words, not fair, to say, but 660 pages is a lot of setup. And yes, he does accomplish this thing, but it also opens up a whole other can of worms. So I don't know. All right, I think I'm done talking spoilers. And I should probably wrap up this review because I can see the time I've been talking for a long time. So what would I rate this book? I'm a little conflicted. So for some parts I was enjoying it. Like I found like the ending was pretty good. I think that was a decent. Um, but for a lot of time I was kind of bored and I found myself not wanting to pick the book up which is a really bad sign honestly if you're like mm, I really would just rather not. Uh, so I feel mean rating it badly, but like, that's the point of a review and a rating, isn't it? To like tell other people whether or not they should spend their time reading it. And I honestly don't really think that you should. Like, if you really enjoyed Inheritance Cycle, like, go for it. But like, as far as this book, like, I felt like it was gonna be a character study of Murtaugh and exploring who he is and the impact of what he's been through. And it just like was not. It was just like a setup for some other big baddie arc and I was extremely disappointed in it so uh, I think I might have to give it two stars oh I don't know I feel like maybe two and a half because like there were elements to it that I did like like I don't know okay oh some other thing did I just remembered this um He's like, Murtaugh is like obsessed with like figuring out like how like all these like magic things work. And at one point he's just like thinking about like, oh, I wonder if I can do like if statements with magic. And I was like, are we coding now? Did like probably me take like an intro to programming class and then be like, oh, I can steal that from my magic system. That's a great idea. It was very weird. <laughs> and then like it never came up again. It was just like one little scene. He's like, I wonder if I could do an if statement. I wonder how many if statements I could nest. And I'm like, <laughs> it just was weird. I didn't like it. Um, the magic system may be a bit too hard in this book. Um, okay, but I've gotten sidetracked. I was supposed to be giving this a star rating. <sighs> okay. I have decided I'm going to go with two and a half because there were parts that I enjoyed and I don't totally regret having read this. Like a lot of it I didn't care for very much, but I will read the next one.
partially just to see if it improves. But also partially because like, I'm interested. This might have been not been what I was looking for, but I am intrigued to see what is next for the world of Alakasia. Um, but if the next one is the same kind of quality, then I probably will not continue. But I have talked to you up for long enough, and that is all that I have time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.